Okay, well, let's turn over to Galatians. Um, I was talking to somebody before the service in the book of Galatians, and he says, are we still in Galatians? <laughs> this is the... This is the series, you know, y'all ever watch, uh, what was that uh, 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 children's show, show uh, Lamb Chop? Y'all remember song Lamb Chop? Ends. And they, they had the song that never ends. This is the song that, ne- this is the series that never ends, it seems like. Um, so n- the next book of the Bible that I want to go through is Jude. It's only one chapter. <laughs> we might get that one done in a month. I'm just kidding. This has been awesome because it's been so practical, but I am going to give you a disclaimer tonight, okay? Tonight we're going to talk about some things that I normally don't talk about. Um, and there's, there are reasons why, but, you know, they're in the Bible for a reason. And, and, and I think sometimes that it's easy that there are some subjects that, um, you know, we can, we can shy away from because it can, it, it can step on people's toes. Um, it, some people may take it the wrong way. But you know, Paul wasn't afraid to, to speak the truth in love. Amen. So I'm just going to say, Jennifer is already like, oh my God, what's coming? What's coming? Oh, I know what's coming up. We're in chapter yeah. six. Yeah, we're in chapter five. I mean, chapter five. Yeah, so. Um, <laughs> I've read six too. Um, so I'm just saying, uh, you need to stay with me through the whole service. Don't check out because we're, we're going to start talking about works of the flesh a little bit, okay? But, um, and say, oh, well, no, I don't want to talk about that. You're, 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 you're getting on my lifestyle or you're getting, uh, you just need to stay with me all the way through it so that we can give proper perspective and proper understanding to it. And it is my goal to see if we can get through the end of chapter five tonight. I'm not very optimistic about that, but it is my goal. Okay, so here we go. Let's go, um, let's go back to verse 13 of Galatians chapter 5. Brethren, we are, you have been called unto liberty. Say liberty. liberty. Freedom. Praise God. Only do not use that liberty for an occasion for your flesh. Jesus did not set us free from sin for us to continue to live in sin. It is a, uh, yeah, what? (laughs) Sorry, John, you may have to have to rethink your thinking a little bit. Jesus did not, I mean, think about it. Humanity was lost. Before we came to Jesus, we were on a fast track to hell and we were under sin's dominion, under death's dominion, under the tyranny of Satan's power, Satan's kingdom, Satan's authority, and we had no strength and we had no way out of that. And so we could be like Flip Wilson and said, the devil made me do it. Sin caused us to live a life and we did not have the strength to resist. And so that's just the way we were born into it. But now Jesus came, he came to set us free from all of that. Amen. Amen. So he didn't come to set us free from all of that and to give us freedom and to give us liberty just so that we can now continue to live that way. Think about the blood of Jesus was shed to set you free from sin. So I don't understand why some people still decide I just want to continue to live a lifestyle. This is what I want to do and how I want to live. And we're about to deal with this. And so he says, so don't use your liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. Let me go ahead and kind of summarize where we're about to go. There is a difference between doing things that, uh, um, that focus on you Versus living a life that focuses on others. Thanks for the amen. There's a, there's a difference between living your life focused on you or living your life focused on others. Now, this isn't necessarily popular in some churches and, and, and a great deal of our mainstream uh, or, or there's, a, there's a great deal of mainstream teaching and stuff that takes the Word of God 
and that and 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 that focuses on us. Now, Jesus did come to set us free. Jesus did give us to bless us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. It is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. What things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. Jesus came, the thief comes not but for to steal, to kill and destroy. But Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Okay, so I am not discounting the fact that Jesus came to set us free, to give us a life, to, to cause us to experience kingdom living and to experience real freedom and to experience real joy. But I'm going to tell you that he came not just to set you free for yourself, but to now set you free for others. And real joy and real fulfillment and real, uh, real contentment and real satisfaction will not happen in your life until that life is being lived, until Jesus is living his life through you to be able to impact the world around you. Amen. Amen. I will tell you that, that, that before I pastored, that I was very self-focused very my family focused, very my children focused. And, 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 and that's as far as I could see. That's as far as my vision went. And it was all just about that and, and making sure that we made it through life. And I really didn't have a focus on other people. And that's a self-centered, nearsighted existence that causes you to fall far short of what God has called you to do. Because when you're walking in the Spirit, the Spirit leads you to others. Oh, isn't that good? The Spirit, when you're, when you're walking in the Spirit, what is Jesus about? He's about leaving the 99 for the one. What's he, what's he about? He's about, he came for a lost and dying world. And so if we're walking in the Spirit and being led by the Spirit, where is He leading you? To that lost and dying world. Yes. Because He's about manifesting the will of the Father here on the earth. And it's the will of the Father that every person be saved. Amen. Amen. So, so we're about to see a, a clear contrast bet, uh, between living for yourself and living for others. That's what the rest of this chapter is going to be about. Okay? Y'all are so excited, I can tell. So don't use that liberty for an occasion of the flesh, but by love, but through love, serve one another. So now this freedom is, doesn't elevate me to dominate, but it, but it actually elevates me to serve. And I have to start having a servant mentality and how can I serve others? For all the laws fulfilled in one word, even this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. But, and this is what was going on in, 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 this, in this church, if you bite and devour one another and you take heed that you be not consumed one another. If you're judging one another, criticizing one another, gossiping about each other, if you are angry with each other, if you are in strife with each other, what's going to happen, you are, your church is going to self-destruct is what's going to happen, or you personally are going to self-destruct. And he's saying, you can't do that because we've got, to, we've got to be in love. We've got to be in unity. And then he goes on to say, this I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you will not fulfill the lust or the desires of your flesh. How many of you know that just because you're saved that your, your flesh still has desires? When, you know, I, I, I'm, so glad that, I'm so glad that Jeff is back tonight. Um, Je Jeff and Melanie. <clears throat> you know, because he, he's, he's the favorite person for me to pick on. He, he represents the flesh well. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Jeff. Well, I, like to, I like to use him as that, as that example when we're talking about people that cut you off in the middle of the road. It's just a great example, you know. It's, uh, there's an opportunity that your flesh wants to rise up and be angry, you know, or somebody does you wrong or somebody says something wrong to you or something like that. How many of you know sometimes, you know, uh, it, there is no such thing as the spirit of slap. <laughs> it's not a spiritual force. I heard somebody say, the spirit of slap wants to come on me. It's not a spirit. It's your flesh. It's a desire of your flesh. Okay? 
And so even though we have, we have the nature of God and the Spirit of God, our flesh, well, you say, well, I thought we were redeemed. I thought we were born again. I thought we got, well, here, check this out. Adam and Eve in the garden. Guess what? Perfect, holy, righteous. And when she saw the fruit, that it was good for food, that it was, uh, it was beautiful to look at, and it, had a, and, it, and it was desired to make one right, wise, she ate. Her flesh and what she saw dominated her thinking, and so the desire of it is the way that she followed instead of following after the Spirit and after what God had said. See, Jesus, guess what? Perfect, holy, righteous, last Adam, he was still tempted. He was tempted in all points like as we are. His flesh had desires, but he didn't, but his spirit is what ruled. And so that's what we want. We want our spirit to be the dominating force and allow it to rule in our life. Amen. So walk in the spirit and we will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Now what that's simply telling us is that is giving us the key, if you will, to not fulfilling the desires of the flesh, to not living a self-centered, self-obsessed life. The key is not to not do these things. Can I say that again? The key is to not obey the flesh. A lot of times we as Christians, uh, or a lot of Christians, live their life trying not to do bad things. But that's not what he's saying do. He's not saying don't do this, don't do that, don't do this. He's saying the answer to this is walk in the Spirit. And if you live your life walking in the Spirit, then the natural byproduct of walking in the Spirit is you will not fulfill the desires of the flesh. See? So where's my focus? My focus is in walking in the Spirit. My focus is in serving others. My focus is looking beyond myself. And the more that I do that, the more that I won't be concerned or even think about what the flesh is saying because now what I've done is I've actually ended up training my flesh to think of others. See? Hebrews chapter, um, Hebrews chapter 5, just hold your finger here. I, I want you to see this for a moment. Hebrews chapter 5, I don't have time to get into all of this, but This is very practical. That's what, that's what I love about doing this series. It's very, very practical. In, in verse, uh, verse 12 of Hebrews chapter 5, you know, here is a very strong statement. He says, when for the time you ought to be teachers, he said, literally, church, you should have already become teachers. Okay? Stop spinning your wheels. Stop you know, you're five years, 10 years, 15 years into the gospel, you should be teachers of this by now. He says, the fact of the matter is you have need that one teach you again. What are the first principles of the oracles of God? And you've become such as you have need of milk and not of strong meat. I can't even go into the strong stuff. You still need just baby milk just to, you know, just to try to make it from Sunday to Sunday. He says, for everyone that uses milk, and check this out, is unskillful in the word of righteousness. The word of righteousness is a skill set. Isn't that interesting? We can declare that we're righteous. We can believe that we're righteous. But actually, a, a real understanding of righteous is a skill that is developed. Just like uh, um, a sports skill or a trade skill or something like that. It's something that is worked on. It is something that is developed. And so if I've got to just go back to the very beginning of, of, of the first principles of, of Christianity and just the basics of grace and the basics of that, what it means is that I'm unskillful in the word of righteousness. But look at what he says. He says, and he is a baby, but strong meat belongs to them that are of a mature or full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses. Now we're talking about your natural body. We're talking about your emotions. We're talking about this natural realm. Have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Go back over to Galatians 5. So actually, as we walk in the Spirit, can I say it this way? Walking in the Spirit 
is a way to become skillful in the word of righteousness. Walking in the Spirit is a way to have your natural, your, your, your natural life here, your natural senses, your emotions, and all of that uh, um, uh, uh, exercised to discern what's right, what's wrong. And, and so everything becomes lined up. Let me put it this way. Your spirit is joined to Jesus' spirit. How many of you think we're going to get through the end of Galatians 5 today? <laughs> your spirit is joined to Jesus' spirit. You're perfect, you're holy, you're righteous in your spirit, man. But that needs, to, that needs to be worked out in our lives. It needs to be expressed in our daily living. You know, and it's great to confess and it's great to say, yes, I'm righteous and yes, I'm this and yes, I'm that. But it needs to have been manifested in the way that I'm, um, I'm dealing with my spouse. It needs, to, it needs to have its expression in the way that I'm dealing with a coworker. It needs, to, it needs to be demonstrated in the way that I'm dealing with people on the road as I drive to and from work. Turn with me over to um, 1 Peter chapter 1. I wouldn't keep going to these other scriptures. We might get through Galatians, but this is important. This is so good. I'm really encouraging myself right now. I don't know if it's helping you guys at all. I love this. So in, in 1 Peter chapter 1, and if you'll look at verse 18, it says, For as much, in 1 Peter 1, 18, For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold, from your vain conversation, uh, King James says, but it's really talking about your, um, your, the way that you were living before, uh, your useless way of living uh, that you received by the tradition from your fathers, but we've been redeemed, we've been bought with the precious blood of Christ as a lamb without blemish and without spot. I would love to camp there, but I just can't. Who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. Mm, thank you, Jesus. Who by him we now believe in God that raised him up from the dead, gave him glory, and that your faith and hope might be in God. And somebody say, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at verse 22. So seeing that you have purified your souls. Now, let's stop there for a moment. Let's talk about this. You've purified your soul. What is your soul? Your soul is, is your mind. Your soul is, is your will. Your soul is your emotions. Your soul is not your spirit. Your spirit has been made perfect, holy, and blameless. Your soul has not. Amen. Amen. Your soul still has, your mind still has the old pattern of thinking. And so, life's journey is the rest of me gets to line up with what is true in my born-again spirit and what Jesus has declared about me. And so there's a process that, that, uh, of purification that is happening in my thought life. There's a process of purifying that is happening in the way I live out and the way that I now respond to people. I'm allowing what is true and what's available in my born-again spirit to become manifest in my soul realm, in my character, and all of that, because now I believe what is true about me, which now releases the Spirit of God and the nature of God to actually work its way out into the rest of my, into the rest of my life. He says, so seeing that you have purified your souls, and then what's, what's, what's the next thing? It says, uh, um, hold on, let's see, where, I missed it. Oh, unto, oh, what, you've purified your souls, how? In obeying the truth. Now, people don't like that word obey. But the fact of the matter is, is when, 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 when I walk in the Spirit, what that means is I am now, I, I make a decision to obey what God has said. I'm telling the rest of my body, I'm telling the rest of my, uh, my soul, my body, and all of that, 
as for me, let me, let me make it very personal for a minute. You know, we'll use Joshua where he says, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Okay, let me just talk about Mark for a moment. As for me and my house, this natural house, okay? This house now is the temple of the Holy Ghost. So forget my wife and my children for a moment. Let me just talk about me. It's not just my spirit that's going to serve the Lord. I'm saying my soul is going to serve the Lord, and I'm going to say that my body is going to serve the Lord. And so what has been spoken about me and what is true in the finished work of the cross, I'm saying I'm going to agree with, I'm going to obey, I'm going to humble myself to when it comes to the Word of God. And we're going to start, mind, we're going to start agreeing with what the Word of God says. And I don't care that, you know, I've got bad news that's come my way, you know, on my job, or I've got bad news that's, that, or the doctor's giving me a bad report, or this or that. You know, I, I'm going to take control of my emotions. I'm going to take control. My emotions aren't going to be the thing to lead me. I'm not led by my soul. I'm led by the Spirit. My, I'm not led by my body, I'm led by the Spirit. In other words, the Spirit is the dominating part in me because that's where Jesus reigns and I want Him not to just be Lord of my spirit, but I want Him to be Lord of my soul and I want Him to be Lord over my body. I want Him to reign in every single area. And so it says, I've, uh, it says I purify my soul through obeying the truth. Whew. And it says this, it goes on to say, I obey the truth, how? Through the Spirit. Through the Spirit. This is the walk in the Spirit. This is so powerful. If we would just get a hold of this. See, a lot of times... I'm just laughing at myself because I actually thought I could go through Galatians 5. Uh, uh, I should have known better. Um, this is so awesome. Sorry. My nose is running a little bit. But body, you're going to line up with what the Word of God says, which says I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus. Amen. And it has to obey the truth, but it doesn't obey the truth because of my own effort. It obeys the truth through the Spirit. What I've done is I've now moved to a place of saying, okay, Jesus reigns. Gee, I am connected to Him. Jesus reigns in my spirit. Jesus, my spirit is holy. My spirit is just. My spirit is perfect. I have been set free. Thank you, Jesus. My spirit has been born again. Look at this. Let me just keep going through. Notice that in this obeying the truth of the Spirit, look at the end result of obeying the truth in the Spirit. Unto unfeigned, which means it's not a pretending, it's not a pretend love. Unto unfeigned love of the brethren. Do you see that? Do you get it? That you're obeying, that you purified your soul, which was very self-centered, self-focused, and it was all about the self-life. And so what happened is, as you, got a real, as you got a revelation of the reality of Jesus' finished work in you and who he's created you to be, that as you make a decision, man, all of me is going to obey that truth and agree with that truth and walk that out, and I'm going to walk in the Spirit, that the Spirit of God begins to walk his life out in you, and it's in result is for others. Now you start thinking and serving others, just what we're talking about in Galatians chapter 5. And then it says, see that you love one another with a pure heart fervently. Why? Because you have been born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which lives and abides forever. What a glorious gospel that produces the amazing change. All right, go back to Galatians chapter 5. So, verse 16. This I say then, walk in the Spirit and you will not, you will not fulfill the desires of the flesh. My job is to walk in the Spirit. It's to obey the truth. My soul and my flesh will be purified as I do that. 
For the flesh, for the, uh, the flesh d has desires against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another so that you cannot do the things that you would. If you are giving attention to your flesh just as much as your spirit, it will paralyze you. And so you, you've got to, you're going to, you've got to figure out one to, 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 to pay attention to. It will stop your progress in the things of God and discovering more of Him and experiencing more of Him. So the focus here is now moving to the Spirit-led life. Somebody say Spirit-led life. Spirit this is about the Spirit-led life. This isn't about the Spirit-led and sometimes the flesh-led life. <laughs> Amen. But if you are led by the Spirit, you're not, even under, you're not under the law. When you're living the Spirit-led life, you're not under the law. The law doesn't have any effect on you. It doesn't even matter because you're just fulfilling everything that God has for you. Now, now we're going to get into the part that I don't like to talk about too much, but we got to because Paul's talking about it. Now, the works of the flesh are manifest. And I'm going to read this from the New King James because it, it kind of um, explains some of these things. Galatians chapter 5. Now the works of the flesh. New King James Version. Come on, get me to the right. Thing. You know what? That would be awesome. Thank you, Tom. Are evident which are. So we're about to we're about to embark on a discovery of what self-focused living looks like. And this is just a measuring stick. In other words, what I'm about to read should not be in the life of a believer. All right. Period. Period. Okay, so it's just, you know, it's, and if they are in the life, it just means that this is an area of your life that you're living according to the flesh. And in chapter 6, it says, He that sows to the flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. Amen. And we don't want that to happen in our lives. So the very first thing, adultery. How many of you believe that Christians shouldn't be committing adultery? Amen. Because in my case, adultery, there's something that follows adultery. It's called murder. That's just like Jesus, uh, not Jesus, Jennifer will make sure that I am judged. So, uh, so I know, she, she's threatened me. I mean, from, from the first day we got married. Adultery, you know, and, 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 and then fornication. Fornication is a broader view of sexual sin. You know, there is, you know, guess what? It is, uh, and I'm just going to say this and, and, and say it boldly. Um, it's not, it, it's, 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 a, it's a work of the flesh to uh, sleep together before you get married. Our society now says it's okay. And, and, and it's, it's expressed on television and, and, and through media that it's okay. And so, and so we have a lot of people in church and, and, and young people in church that don't know that it's any better because this is where they've grown up. And, you know, and, and parents have even been okay with it. You know. and, and the fact of the matter is, is what we're doing is we're empowering young people and, and, so, and now even divorcees or whatever, we're empowering people to live for their flesh and to live a self-centered um, lifestyle. And, and at the end of the day, it's going to produce some kind of death. It will produce some heartache. It will, I mean, you know, and, and, and certainly there's all kinds of STDs and things out there. It's not because God's judging people for this. This is sin's design is to produce death in your life. And God simply wants to rescue you from that and to save you from that and to put you into his best for you because marriage is such a beautiful thing and such the thing that God declared from the very beginning. And so, and so anyway, you know, uh, any kind of sexual sin, sexual immorality, which obviously includes uh, 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 pornography and, and includes, uh, you know, any of the things that, that, that are just out there you know, that would be of a sexual nature, that is a lust of the flesh or a desire of the flesh. And it is not, it should not be in the life of the believer. Amen. That's right. 
but it's but the freedom from it isn't by trying to stop. <laughs> the free the freedom of it is in walking in the spirit. Okay, so I mean, so we can talk we can talk boldly about this because Paul talked boldly about these things. All right, and and if 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 these if this kind of conversation causes us to, to, to kind of shrink back a little bit and say, you know what, this is really, this is an uncomfortable subject. It's simply because we haven't been bold enough to declare the word and because our society kind of wants to try to bully us into not talking about these things or our Christian culture in some cases says, look, just don't talk about that side of things because it makes people uncomfortable. It ought to make you uncomfortable because if you, you know, whom the Lord loves he corrects and he and 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 the correction is always about trying to bring them to that life okay are we okay all right Un, uh, fornication uncleanness uh lewdness the um the king james version says lasciviousness what is lasciviousness or lewdness it is an unrestrained lifestyle do you know that liberty in christ doesn't equal unrestrained lifestyle Liberty in Christ equals submission to Christ. And so what the Word of God says in living by the Spirit, it is the guardrails for our life. It is, it is the roadmap for our life. And guess what? There, you know, there are riverbanks that keep that flow of that river, and there are things that, that, we, that we don't do. Okay, um, Lasciviousness is an unrestrained lifestyle. So you see this... Um, in, uh, in the days of Noah, people were unrestrained in their thinking, unrestrained in their action to the, po- to the place that they were only evil continually. We, uh, uh, and, and, and I'll just say this, I mean, it's just true. Our society has been drifting this way so that what was, what was considered wrong and what was not allowed in our society 50 years ago, you know, has gradually devolved into an anything goes mentality. And an anything goes, well, you know, uh, people can love whoever they want to, they can sleep with whoever they want to, it doesn't matter what sex they are or whatever, to the point that, that now that we've, we've accepted this in our society, and now the things that, and the relationships that are being displayed on television and, and, and movies and things, now what's, what, now we've, 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 we're now, they're trying to push the envelope to the place of, you know, I may have been born, I may have been born a guy, but I want to be a woman. So I'm just going to identify myself in the way that I feel. And so we are a sense oriented society instead of a word centered. And so it continues and continues and continues to the point now that, that, that they're allowing uh, people not to even decide on, the, on children's birth certificates. If they're a boy or a girl, they're going to wait till they, they decide what they want to be. Parents that won't even name their child because they want their child to name himself or herself depending on what they want to be. And they think that that's wisdom and they think that that's, um, um, uh, well, the to- not tolerance, not the word I'm looking for. They think that that is, uh, um, uh, you know, I, I don't know the word I'm looking for. It just, you know, that they're enlightened, that enlightened thinking, you know, and that sort of thing. No. No, it's, it absolutely de- describes the depravity of, of, of humans without God. Yeah, that's right. Okay, and, 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 and listen, brothers and sisters, this should not be happening in the church. Amen. We should not, we should be preaching a gospel that empowers people to live the changed life. We should be preaching a gospel that allows Jesus to rule, Jesus to reign, and everything about him to be manifested in our lives and to live that way and freedom and all of that. I'm just, I'm I'm reading the word, okay? Are we okay? Yeah. All right, so so there's that. And, and, And all of us here is like, yep, that's not me, that's not me, and that's not me, and thank God for it. Well, we're not done yet. Verse 20, idolatry. Well, I, I, that's, that's definitely not me because I don't idolize anybody as God. Well, tell that to most Alabama football players. Or not football players, but fans. 
or, well, I, I can promise you right now there's not a single Auburn fan that idolizes anybody on the Auburn team. Okay? We're okay right now. <laughs> but we, what, we've, what we've done in our society is, is, is people want to find somebody to look up to. And they want to find somebody, and, and it becomes worship. Maybe it's not worship as a God, but, but you know, your, your, your stars, your, uh, uh, your movie stars, your, your, your music stars, your country music stars, all these people, people are idolizing, and, and, and things become idolatry in our eyes because that's who we as a society have decided we're going to worship. And it's a work of the flesh. When, when a family, ah, this is meddling, but I, I think I'll say it. When a family like the Kardashians can make millions of dollars because millions of people care what they do every single day, and will tune in, or when people are making thousands and hundreds of thousands of dollars on YouTube just by keeping a camera of what they're doing for the day to get so many followers, guys, we have a problem with idolatry. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And, and so we need to be cautious that we're not following into the same trap because since that's the way society is going, how important are these things in our lives? See, you'll have people that won't come to church the next day because they don't want to see the opposite, you know, if, if after the Alabama-Auburn game, depending on who wins. You have divorces that are happening. I'm just saying our priorities and when we walk in the Spirit, what do we do? We love one another. We serve one another, whether they're an Alabama fan or an Auburn fan or whatever. That doesn't matter because now we're walking in the Spirit. Yeah, we can enjoy football. Don't get me wrong about that. I love football. I love watching football. We can enjoy it, but you know what? That's not my life. Okay? And I lost half the state of Alabama right then. <laughs> Idolatry, sorcery, uh, or witchcraft is obviously a work of the flesh. It's not a work of a, it's not even a work of a spirit. It's still a work of the flesh. Um, hatred, uh, so, so, so hatred, obviously a work of the flesh. Contentions, so if you are in, in strife, if you are quarreling with people, if, if, if you are in, in, these, in this fight with people, in this, in, 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 that's a work of the flesh. It's not, it's not something that comes out of the spirit. Um, let's see, uh, contentions, jealousy. If you're jealous of other people, it's because you are looking at yourself and them after the flesh. And the Bible says we no longer know people after the flesh, but after the spirit. And so by looking at somebody else's new car, new house, new clothes, new, uh, 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 what their children are doing or whatever, and you're jealous for what they have, then it's simply because you don't acknowledge what you have or you think that what you have is less than. And Hebrews 13, 5 says, let us be content with with such things that we have. Why? And not to let covetousness rule our life. Why? Because God has said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I will always take care of you. And so the fact of the matter is we already have everything that we need in Jesus Christ and being led by the Spirit will cause us to walk into that place of abundance, will cause us to walk into that place of absolute supply, will cause us to walk into that place of always being self-sufficient, requiring no aid or support. But if I'm looking at somebody else and what they've got, then that means I've taken my eyes off the most important thing or person and that that is Jesus. But the moment that I'm beholding him and looking to him and acknowledging him, this is, this is saying, emotions, I won't allow you to be jealous. I'm not going to allow you to be envious. I'm not going to allow you to be that because I'm going to obey the truth through the spirit. And so what's happening is I am becoming skillful in the word of righteousness. See? 
See how important this is? Oh, yeah, but a little envy, a little jealousy, a little, it's not going to hurt me. Just go back to what I preached Sunday morning about a generational blessing and about the effect that what you allow to dominate your life will have on the generation after you. It's that important. Jealousies. This says outbursts of wrath. Now we're, now we're getting a little closer to home. <laughs> Outburst of wrath, which may or may not include cuss words and things like that. Outbursts. It's a work of the flesh. Selfish ambition. This is a big one. This is huge. Somebody say huge. huge. Selfish ambition. Selfish ambition is a work of the flesh. In other words, you want to step on others, try to get the promotion and all of that, and, 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 and you want this, and this is your goal, and this is your plan, and, and, and what's your one-year plan, what's your five-year plan, what's your 10-year plan? You know, uh, um, a close friend of mine had his own plan for his own life that by the time that he was 50, he wanted to be an independent, self-made millionaire and financially independent. And, and so from the time that he was 20 to the time that he was 50, that was his plan for his life, his own ambition. And then he tried to take the Word of God, you know, and believe along with that and do the things so that he could fulfill his own selfish ambition. And he failed miserably at it. Uh, um, uh, uh, some things took a wrong turn when the economy he took the wrong turn and all that kind of stuff. And so when he could not, when, when, when it became evident that he was a failure and that his selfish ambition, that it caused him to fail and his business to fail and all of that, then he was never able to recover uh, mentally. He was never able to recover spiritually. He was never able to recover emotionally from that. And it literally killed him. Literally one day, sickness came in, and by the time he got to the hospital, his whole body was beginning to shut down. And he was only, he, uh, he wasn't too much older than 50, 51, 52, something like that. This right here was a huge contributing factor because he wasn't walking in the Spirit. These things, if left to themselves, will produce death in your life. I know that this isn't popular and this isn't, you know, a jump up and down and shout hooray message. But it's, if we identify these things, what will happen is, is as I read through these things, then as you say, you know what, I might have had some selfish ambition. You know what, I think jealousy is at work in my life regarding this person. Now. That's not to bring condemnation. That's, right. that's not to bring, that's not for you to start beating yourself up with. Yeah. That, that, that what this serves to do is, is, is it serves to help you identify areas that you can now apply the grace of God, the love of God, walk in the Spirit, so that, you, so that those areas become, you become skillful in the word of righteousness, so that the kingdom life in those areas begins to manifest so that the king begins to manifest so that now instead of death operating in that area now the life of god can operate in that area and isn't that the key isn't that what we want see so when i recognize that these things are happening i don't use that i was like man i am just i am just messed up no i just take that and i say okay it's a marker it's a measure and here's an area that i get to apply the grace of god and the love of god and what the spirit of god says and the fruit of the spirit Okay, jealousies, outburst of rest, selfish ambitions, uh, dissensions, uh, which again is dissension amongst yourselves, um, heresies. Uh, um, uh, so, even, so even when you're dealing with heresy, that's a work of the flesh. What do I mean by that? Um, if your revelation of something in the Word become, uh, exalts you, and what I mean, what do I mean, and this happens a lot of times with Christians, is that uh, they want significance and value, or they want to get significance and value from a revelation that they've gotten. You know, so that it's like, look at me, check this out. I was praying the other day, and man, God showed me this. 
and 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 this is and 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 this was this was awesome. But what's the motivation in telling it, and what's the motivation of getting it? If it's if it's to if it's to draw value and significance from that amongst your peers, then what what may happen is if it feeds your ego and it feeds that emotion. I mean, I'm just I, I'm preaching real good right now. If it, if it. <laughs> If, it, if, 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 I don't, if I do say so myself, if it, if, if it's, if it, if it feeds you, what'd you say? Isn't that heresy? Yeah, isn't that, <laughs> that's heresy. I'm focusing on me right now. Uh, it, if it feeds that part of your ego, then, then th- this, this is the first step towards doctrinal heresy because now you're going to continue down this path because it becomes a drug that you've got to continue to get your significance and your value from. And this is where heresies and, 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 and wrong doctrines and splits and all these things, this is what happens because it becomes about pride, self-centeredness, and, and you can't be in strife and you can't be in, unless, unless it starts with your pride first. That's what the Word says. Okay? All right, we're going to get through all of these and then I, I'm going to share one other thing with you and then we'll... We'll finish chapter 5 next week um, as it deals with the fruit of the Spirit. Uh, selfish ambitions, heresies, envy. So envy and jealousy go hand in hand. Murders, work of the flesh, in case you didn't know that. Murders, um, drunkenness, drunkenness. Uh, this is an issue in our society, guys. And, and, and so I, I'm just going to, um, he, he wrote it, so I'm going to talk about it. Okay. And, and, and this is an issue that sometimes people get upset at me over um, because they, 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 when I do talk about it, um, they feel like that, you know, I'm just, you know, now I'm being legalistic because we're grace people, okay? And, and, and guys, all I'm going to say is this, um, you know, what you do as far as drinking alcohol, not drinking alcohol, I'm not, I'm not judging that and I'm not trying to regulate that. But here's what I can tell you, is, is that Proverbs has some things about when you have too much to drink, um, the thoughts that happen and the things that happen as a result of you being drunk. And, 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 and so um, the, the thing that you've got to be cautious about, Romans 14 talks about alcohol uh, and drinking in this way, that if you know that you're around somebody that is offended by it, in, 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 our, in our Bible Belt Christian society, you've got to be aware of who you are around. He says, don't do it. Why? Because you're free, your freedom now causes you to be free to serve others. And if you insist on your right to drink and you insist on your right to do this because you're under grace and people shouldn't judge you for it, then you are being self-centered. There, I said it. Okay? Now, do I have a problem with people drinking alcohol? No, I don't. That's up to you. The culture is different. I've talked to a number of you about this very same, and you know what my heart is on this. I went to, uh, uh, um, I went to a place one time and, uh, in, another, in another country, and, and so after two or three times, you know, they, they, they all, you know, I, I don't drink, but that's not... You know, I, I just, I don't like alcohol, all right? So I'm not saying I do it because I'm so holy and I'm so, per- I, I don't like the way it makes me feel and I don't like the way it tastes, okay? But I, uh, um, we were in a place and they offered me some wine and they offered me this and, and finally got to the point that I thought, man, if I refuse again, I'm just going to offend them. So you know what I said? Yeah, absolutely, I'll take a little glass of wine. Was not condemned, was not upset about it or anything like that in their culture, a glass of wine is like drinking a glass of tea or a glass of coffee or a cup of coffee or something like that. Okay, so this is not what I'm talking about. What he's talking about here is you having so much to drink that you go that 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 it affects your ability to think and your drunkenness. And if you want to insist on your right to do that in the presence of others when you know others don't agree with it or that it offends others, then it means that, that you are more concerned about your freedom than you are in, 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 what other, in, in trying to be a blessing to others. And so there's a difference between walking in the Spirit and there's a difference in, um, in, in, in insisting on what you do. Okay, So drunkenness, 
Um, that drunkenness is a work of the flesh. That's what it says. Okay? So you just have to be cautious and make sure. Okay? So that's, that, that's, that's all I'm going to say about that. I know this is not a popular subject at all in today's society. Um, but it is here in the Word of God, and so I'm not going to back off from it just because our society doesn't agree with this. All right? Uh, revelries, which is partying and things like that, you know, and, and, and so just, just drunken parties and drunken this and all of that kind of stuff, these are works of the flesh. These are things that we know. Um, and, and so he said, which I tell you beforehand, just as I was also told you in times past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Key, I can't stop here. I, I got to explain this phrase. Those that do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. So are you telling me, Pastor, that if, if, I'm, if I envy and if I'm, if I'm jealous of somebody, then that keeps me out of the kingdom of God? No, that's not what I'm saying. That's not what he's saying, because I, I need to give you context for just a moment so that you understand how he's relating to this. This is so huge. Most people miss what I'm about to tell you. Turn with me over to Ephesians chapter 5. Now, let me give you a little template so that, so that you know that we're not just talking about behavior and how you live and that sort of thing. Paul, in most of his letters, starts out talking about who you are in Christ, who you are in the Spirit. Ephesians 1, 2, and 3 talks about that we were dead in sins, but we're now seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. This is your reality. You were created in Christ Jesus for good works. You are His workmanship. This is who you are. 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 And then he, after he lays that spiritual and true foundation, he transitions to now this is what it looks like. Do you understand what I'm saying? So we're in chapter 5 that has transitioned to this is what it looks like. The reality of life in the Spirit looks like this. So he says, So therefore, be imitators of God as dear children. Walk in love. Therefore, because you're already this, he says, Be imitators of God as dear children. Walk in love as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling aroma. But, check it out, fornication, all kinds of sexual sin, and uncleanness or covetousness, let it not even be named among you as is fitting for saints. He's saying this lifestyle doesn't belong to somebody who's a saint. This isn't who you are. Get this. This is so awesome. I love this. Neither, this is going to nail a, a couple of us, neither filthiness nor foolish talking. Ah. Nor coarse jesting. Dirty jokes, dirty talking, things like that. That's not also um, not becoming of a saint of God. And so if we choose to, uh, to converse with each other this way, then it is a work of the flesh. Wow, thank y'all so much for agreeing with me on that. <laughs> but our, our talk should be giving of thanks. Okay? If we're, be, if we're walking in the Spirit, our language is going to reflect that. For this you know, this is where I want you to see, that no fornicator, unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Well, there you go. If I do these things, then that means that I don't have, I can't be, I don't have an inheritance in the kingdom of God. I'm not part of the kingdom of God. And end of chapter, end of book, we're done. No, it's not. Check this out. This is so awesome. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore do not be partakers with them. Check this out, verse 8. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. So walk as children of light. Turn with me over to 1 Corinthians, and then I'm going to close. 1 Corinthians chapter 5 or 6, I believe it is. 
So I want you to notice that he talks about idolaters, fornicators, but he says you were darkness, but you are light. So don't walk the way you used to be is really what he is talking about. Um, let's see here. Is it first or is it second? Ah, here it is. First uh, Corinthians chapter six and verse and, 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 and he's talking uh, to people that he says were carnally uh, or fleshly living Christians. And he says in verse uh, 9 of 1 Corinthians chapter 6, Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Period. Unrighteous people, which are, not, which are those outside of the kingdom, which are those that are unbelievers, which are those that are the sinners, which are those that are uh, um, uh, children of Satan, if you will, will not inherit the kingdom. Do not be deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. It's a very strong statement. But look at the next verse. And such were some of you. Do you see what he's doing here? He is now appealing to your true identity. Okay? So all of this describes people who are outside of the kingdom of God, who have not been born again, and so who are now identified based on their behavior. And our society is trying to create an identity-based society. Groups of people, my identity is this, my identity is this, my identity is this. And that's not the way we should look at ourselves. Our identity is now found in one person, and that is Jesus Christ. It's not found in a group of people. And so what he is doing is he's moving them place away from an identity of who they used to be into the identity of who they are. And so what he says here, he says, uh, 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 but such were some of you, but you were washed. You were sanctified. You were justified in the name of, uh, of the Lord Jesus and by the spirit of our God. Woo! So when he's talking about those that practice and live this way and those that do, he's, he's talking about those that are still firmly rooted in, in the system of first Adam. They were born into this world, but they've never been born again. And people that are that way will not be able to inherit the kingdom of God. They will not go in. I said this was the last scripture, um, but it's not. Because uh, uh, this is the last one, Revelations uh, 21, and, and, and it's the last book of the Bible, so I can't go any further after this. Revelation chapter 21. The, I, I just, I, I got to bring this together just so that you see it. Um, and and maybe, uh, maybe it's chapter 22. But, but what he says is, is outside of the city. Um, where is it? Can anybody see? Let's see here. Wait a minute, wait a minute, here it is, here it is. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Look at Revelations 21, 27. Because he had just seen the temple, he had just seen uh, New Jerusalem. And in verse 24, it says, The nations of those who are saved shall walk in its light. The kings of the earth bring their glory. This is a powerful, powerful thing. The gate shall not. But he says, There shall, in verse 27, enter into New Jerusalem, who we are a part of right now, by the way. This isn't just a future. This isn't a future thing. We're a part of, we've come to New Jerusalem and to just men made perfect, according to Hebrews chapter 13. There shall by no means enter it anything that defiles or causes an abomination or lie, but only those who are written in the Lamb's book of life. And then look at chapter 22, verse, verse uh, 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 15. 
it's in verse 14, it says, Blessed are those who do His commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life, and may enter through the gates into the city. But outside of the city are dogs and sorcerers, and sexually immoral, and mur murderers, and idolaters, and whoever loves and practices a lie. So basically what he's saying here is, is that those that are of the kingdom of darkness will not be able to access the new kingdom, will not be able to access the new Jerusalem. Amen. And so, but back to 1 Corinthians, he says, that's who you were, but that's not who you are anymore. So now live out who you are. You're washed. You're clean. You're made perfect. You're justified by the Spirit of God. And so, as a result, you get to now be led by the Spirit, be able to walk by the Spirit, and no longer allow the works of the flesh to dominate your life. You no longer have to be a sense-led, emotion-led, a flesh-led person, flesh-led Christian. You can be a Spirit-led uh, uh, and, and the fruit of the Spirit will begin to operate in every area, which this is what we'll get into next, next week, the fruit of the Spirit operating in your life. But all of these things list things so that you can take a measure of your own life, so that you can move from a place of being a flesh-led baby Christian to, a, to one who is mature and skillful in the word of righteousness so that the kingdom and so that the life of God will become established not only in your soul and in your body, but you will influence those around you. And it's about expanding the kingdom and the king and expressing his praises and glory here in the earth. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So, let's just take a moment and process that for a minute. <laughs> it's in the Word. So we, we talk about the things that are in the Word. Amen. Amen. And, what if, what, and what if I don't like what I just read? And what if I don't like what I just talked about? Grow up. Amen. Amen. Here, this is the whole, this is the whole, this is the rub, right? Yeah. The rub is, 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 is we have baby Christians that are still, wah, wah, I want to do it my way, wah, wah, take care of me, feed me, my flesh wants to do this, wah, wah, I'm a victim, wah, wah, and, and, and so our church is full of needy, wimpy, baby Christians because they won't take responsibility for their own growth wow. and won't allow the reality of righteousness to be manifest in their thinking and to be manifest in their emotions, to be manifest in the way that they live and interact with others. And I want to tell you that God has called all of us. You are a chosen generation, the Bible says. You are a royal priesthood. You are a holy nation. You are a peculiar people chosen by God for the purpose of demonstrating and showing forth His works and to demonstrate and show forth what it looks like to live the kingdom life. And so that God would get praise, not just through what you say and not just on Sunday morning, but actually would get praise by how you uh, live your life and allow Christ to live His life through you. As I choose, thank you, Father, let's just kind of receive this next thought for a moment. As I choose to be led by the Spirit, as I choose to walk in the Spirit, as I choose to forgive others, as I choose to love others, as I choose, thank you, Lord. Yes, the Lord's the Spirit of God is doing a work in you right now, and some of us right now. As I choose to say, yes, I'll be skillful in the word of righteousness. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Man, hearts are, being, are yielding to the Spirit of God right now. Wow. As I choose to let go of the anger, as I choose to let go of, of the selfish ambition, as I choose to let go of, of the addiction, as I choose to let go of the jealousy and the, and the envy, as I choose to let go of those things, and I say yes, Yes to walking in the Spirit. Yes to being led in the Spirit. Yes to becoming skillful in the word of righteousness. Those that are skillful in the word of righteousness truly experience kingdom living. But as we allow different things to, 
you know, to say, no, no, this is an area that I'd really like to hold on to, then, 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 then you're just inviting death to come in and, 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 and to, to operate against the desires of the Spirit. And then it says, then you cannot do what you would want to do. In other words, it paralyzes your progress. And some of you may have wondered, why haven't I progressed in the things of God? Why, why have I not progressed in my giftings and my callings? Why have I not? And this may be an answer for some of you. The Lord says, walk in the Spirit, not 50%. Not 75%. Make a decision 100%. Father, I follow you. And you purify your souls by obeying the truth. Father, right now in Jesus' name, we receive that. We receive this word that you have, Jesus, you came to set us free from our own selfish desires, our own enslavement to sin, our own uh, uh, self-centered living, and that you so set us free by the Spirit that as we, as we make a decision to obey the truth and yield to you through the Spirit, that the Spirit now begins to live that life and empowers us to live for others. Because we come from a place of victory, not a place of being a victim. We come from a place of being fully supplied, fully taken care of, because you're with us in every place and in every way. And, and so that now actually positions us to truly love others. Thank you, Father. Father, we receive, we receive, we receive. We love you. You loved us so much to empower us to live the kingdom life. So, Father, may you be glorified in everything that we think, everything that we say, everything that we do. May we be... You know, we were darkness, but we are light. So we declare that we walk as children of light. Children of light. Everyone watching by live stream, everyone here tonight, you are children of light. You were washed. You were sanctified. You were cleansed. You were justified. You were made holy. That's who you are. Now walk that.